right, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is not our music. This is not our music. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. day when you can truly say yes to Jesus not by walking up and joining church not by shouting in the pulpit or the pew but when you can say yes to Jesus from your heart that is a wonderful day and it's a peace when you know that God got you and you said yes to him 
and no to self. My Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Boy, that'll preach all by itself. Have you said yes? Good God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we thank you this morning for coming out and helping us to celebrate another day in Jesus Christ. We thank you for uh, supporting the Master's Touch Worship Center. Those that have come out this morning, God bless you. Uh, those that may have joined us online, uh, we bless you as well. And uh, we are just excited today on what God is doing and what he shall continue to do. So we will move on through the service. God definitely has a word in the house today. Uh, and, and let me just, on the front end, just say this, this will not be a shouting message. This will not be... Um, a message that um, gets you happy and excited. Uh, this is a word that uh, I struggled with bringing. Even last night, I struggled. But uh, one of the things that God knows is that uh, if he gives it to me, I'm going to tell it just like he gave it to me. So uh, we just thank God that he, he still speaks as he always has. So with that being said, we will have Lady Monica to come and um, she's going to read scripture, pray, give the announcements. And I believe she has her Lady Monica-ism uh, ready for today. So uh, Lady Monica. Gonna come, as they used to say in the Baptist, she's gonna come in her own way. In God's way. In God's way. Huh? All right, girl, preach that thing. Not your own way, in God's way, huh? All right. Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It is good to be in the house of the Lord again. We just want to thank you, God, for um, your presence. And um, I don't know what Pastor Slaughter was talking about, that it won't be a shouting message anytime that God brings his word as a shout. So um, if you want to shout, shout. If you want to run, run. If you want to clap, clap. Because we're here to serve his, na his holy name, his, my, our Father. So... Um, if you guys will get your Bibles um, together, and we will be reading out of um, Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 5. Whenever you pray, you must be, you must not be like the hypocrites, because they love to pray standing in the synagogues mm. and on the street corners to be seen by people. My God. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. Mm. But when you pray, go into your private room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles, since they, they, since they image them there, I'm sorry, since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them, because your Father knows the things you need before you ask Him. I read to you Matthew God. chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. And God bless the hearers and the readers of His red word. And if everybody could stand so we can go into prayer. Father God, we come to you, God, just thanking you, God, for another day, God. Thanking you for your presence in our lives, God. We will be lost without you. And we just thank you for your hand that you have always kept on us, even when we didn't know that we were being kept, God. We just thank you for your blood, Father, that you allowed your son to shed on the cross for us, God. 
Father God, we know not what we do, but we look to you, God, looking for answers, looking for guidance, looking for wisdom, God, in everything that we do, Father. And I pray for those that are lost, God, not just lost and not knowing where they're going, but lost in their mind, God, lost and not knowing who you are, God, not knowing the full fulfillment of your glory, God. And I just thank you, God, for who you are, God. And I pray, God, that this message today, that this service today be about your business, God. Be about saving lives, God. Be about bringing souls to Christ, God. We just thank you, God, for who you are, God. Thank you for your presence in this place, God. Thank you for this man that you placed in this household, God, in this household of faith, God that he would bring forward your word, God, that he would be obedient to your word, God, that he would teach your people, God, the, the living word, the word that you had set forth out of his mouth, God. And I pray that, God, that we be obedient to your word, God, that we allow it to penetrate our minds and our hearts, God, so our walk is right, God, our, our talk is different, God, that our mind change, God, that our heart is fixed, God, that our troubles that we lay at the altar, we just thank you, God, Father. We just thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice, God. We can never thank you enough, and we just give you all the glory, God, and we praise your holy name, God. We bless you, God, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, and we ask this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Good God Okay, guys, for morning announcements, who was not here Thursday? If you were not, okay, so those that raised their hands and were not here Thursday, you need to go back and look at our past message. Yeah. Pastor Slaughter, what was that title of that message? They can hear you from right there. Um, the title of the message was Better Not Bitter. Better Not Bitter. Yeah. And let me tell Woo! you, Jeez. I've gotten so many response off of that message. Mm. It was just a blessing. It was. Amen. You know, and to Amen. have a relationship with God and have a relationship with your spouse. God said to, for you to love your spouse. God said for you to um, lift your spouse up to him. And you can't do that when you're bitter. Mm. You can't ask God to bless your marriage and bless your spouse when you're bitter. So if you missed that message, that segment, Please go back to our YouTube channel. Has it been uploaded? Okay. So go to our Facebook, and you can um, find it there. Make your comments. We will do a part two, and we'll be talking about forgiveness after the bitterness. Um, so that was last Thursday. Um, so govern yourself accordingly to that. Just pray that you um, review it, make comments and emails. Um, we will respond to you and those that need prayer and need counseling. Pastor Slaughter is here to do that for you. Um, also, this Thursday, we'll be studying our last book of the seven churches for our Bible study. So if you missed the first six, please go back to our YouTube channel and our Facebook. It is all there. But you can always come here this Thursday at 7 o'clock at 3331. Blue Ridge Road to hear the uh, message for the last book of the Bible, the last book that we will be studying, which is the seven churches. And um, don't forget to um, worship with us every Sunday morning here at 3331 Blue Ridge Road, and the services start at 8:30. Okay, so every second and fourth Thursday is our Bible study, and every first and third Thursday is our couples retreat so i pray that you guys would adhere to the announcements and don't forget to follow us on twitter at tmtwc1 and facebook at tmtwc and subscribe to our youtube channel at tmtwc and our instagram at tmtwc9 nine is the month that the church was birthed and then our website at tmtwc.org and all that acronym means the Master's Touch Worship Center, okay, where we serve a living God Hallelujah. and that uh, we're, try we're working towards 
putting families, uh, making families great again in God's way. Amen. So don't forget Amen. to um, the announcements. And if you have any questions about our services and what we are about, you can email us at info. Is it info at tmtwc.org? Okay. Now for my Monicaism. All right now. Hey. So long before you were conceived by your parents, mm. you guys, I'm just like my mind is witch. That's all right. That's all right. We witch. We witch. Okay. So long before you were conceived by your parents first, it was not a faith or coincidence mm. that you were breathing at that very moment. Mm. You are alive because God wanted you to be created. My God for something better than what you've chosen right now. You're not a mistake. You are planned by God. So remember, when you are feeling lost and unloved, and, um, and some people are born into a family where the parents have deserted them or have been told that, you know, you are a mistake. Let me tell you, God does not make mistakes. He has a purpose for everyone's life. You have a choice. And this your walk in Christ is a choice. He is not going to puppet you. He is not going to, you know, push buttons to make things happen. He, You have a choice to choose him. So remember, you're not a mistake, and you're, you were chosen to be created by him by him amen. okay amen. so that is all that i have to say today awesome, awesome. and um the next voice you will be hearing is the own pastor slaughter but if everyone could stand so we can take our offering amen. get your monies in hand you can always go to our cash app at tmtwc um you can go to tidely and giveify and look for us and those that are here, if you would stand, and I'm gonna turn because I'm trying to remember. Everyone to my, this side, go to your left. Everyone to my right, go to your right. Is that simple enough? Yes, all right, so everyone's following it. That's awesome. And we just ask that you give according to what God has um, blessed you. And um, I just wanna read a scripture. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. So, wherever you give to the poor, don't sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets, to be applauded by people. Truly I tell you, they, they have their reward, but when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be a secret, and your Father who sees his secret will reward you. My God. Okay? Amen. We're gonna lift this offering up to God. Father God, we come, God, just thanking you again, Thank you. being able to give, and give according to our hearts, God. I pray that the church use the offering to your glory, God, your glory. to this kingdom, God. And we just thank you for always being a blessing to the master's touch, God. Thank you for always making a way, God, always shine, sharing your light. And we just thank you for the offering that those that gave and those that had the desire but did not have the means. And we just ask this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Girl, you did a mini sermon up here. Good Lord. Hallelujah. God, we thank you this morning. Good job, baby. Awesome, awesome, awesome job. Um, thank you, Jesus. So uh, just govern yourselves accordingly uh, to the announcements. Uh, thank God for the Monicaism this morning. Uh, just all, baby, that you give and that you do in excellence as usual. God bless you. Thank you. Um, so this morning, oh, we we have a song of preparation, very short song of preparation this morning. Uh, so this is not our music, and we will go into 
this morning song of preparation. Hallelujah. your name for all that you continue to do in our lives father e even lord when we don't see what you're doing god we know for your word says that you're always working that you're always here by our sides and god that we thank you for always being there lord we ask that you would take the mic this morning father we ask that you would speak, that you would have your way, and that you would speak boldly, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Set me down, let me enjoy the message along with everybody else to hear what you have to say. God, we thank you, Lord, we honor you, and we bless your holy name. It is in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray, and everybody said amen. Amen, amen. 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 So... Uh, this morning, we are going to teach this morning. Y'all know I'm, I get very excited about the Word of God, so um, pray for me. Um, but we are going to slow down a little bit this morning because there is a word that needs to get forth. And um, I want to make sure that I do what God has called me to do. Uh, this morning, uh, for those of you that are online, you saw the title 
that I chose to use this morning, and the title is Getting Paid. Getting Paid. Now, I know growing up, you know, in the world, getting paid means, you know, you out and you doing your thing and you getting paid, you making that money, you 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 doing your thing to to provide, to to do the things you want to do. And uh, last night, as I was preparing, I uh, went online and I just I just put in getting paid and wanted just to see what would come up and wanted to get the thoughts and the ideas of this world, of what does this world think or mean when you say getting paid, getting paid. And I tell you, it w it blew my mind. Uh, all I saw for the first couple of pages was rappers talking about getting paid. And I don't know some of these dudes, and some of them I do know, I saw a uh, Lil Duke. Y'all know Lil Duke? Don't know Lil Duke? I don't either. I saw Three Six Mafia had a song getting paid. I saw Soldier Boy yeah. getting paid. Juvenile yeah. getting paid, and then I even saw Ti yeah. talking about getting paid. getting paid. And then they had some. Uh, songs on there and they had the lyrics and uh this guy uh, his name forgive me if i mispronounce this trade the truth trade the truth don't know him either don't know? okay well trade the truth the hook in his song is we don't even count the money no more we just blow it we spend it all up he said, we don't even count the money no more. We just throw it and make them pick it up. Wow. Getting paid. Getting paid. Nicki Minaj mm -hmm. has a song, Getting Paid. And the hook to her song in Getting Paid is, I don't care what you haters saying, I'm getting paid. And if you're not talking about money, then I don't understand your language. Wow. Getting paid. So we see, and if you've ever, if you followed this ministry for any length of time, you know that one of the things that we always talk about is that whatever the word of God says, the world does the direct opposite. If the word of God talks about love, the world is talking about is hating. If the word of God is saying not to do, then the world is saying to do. So this morning, I want to talk about getting paid. Well, beloved, I, I, I realize that Jesus also had a song and the hook to his song is in Romans 6 23 and it says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord so beloved Jesus always talked truth. And what he brought through this scripture, he was talking about getting paid. Getting paid not like the world leads you about getting paid. Because when the world talks about getting paid, it's talking about making that money and doing things and and running after the cars and the houses and the women or the men and the lavish lifestyle, getting paid, doing your thing, not worrying about no money. 
and just doing you. Well, Jesus is getting paid again is the direct opposite of what this world says. Jesus is getting paid. The hook in his rap song is for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when we look at that, when we see wages, what are wages? Wages is what you receive when you do a work. When you do work, you get paid a certain wage. Some wages are in salary. Some wages are 1099 where you own your own business and you perform a service and you get a wage for the services you perform. Well, beloved, God is saying in this scripture says for the wages for what you do in sin, the wages that you get back for the work you perform is death. Death. See, now the world don't want you to think about getting paid in that sense. The world wants you to be so intoxicated about chasing money and chasing things. And like the hook says, you know, um, we don't even count the money no more. We just throw it and make them pick it up. We The, the world wants you to be so enamored, so entrusted and getting paid in money, it don't want you to think about the consequences of your actions. But Jesus and his, his rap song and, and his hook and his word, he says, for the wages of sin is death. So, beloved, a lot of people don't know, but Death in the word of God does not always mean death as we see it in the world. When we talk about death in the world, we talk about someone dying and this physical body leaving the earth, being decayed in the ground, and you're here no more. But beloved, they are actually seven different types of death wow. in the Bible. The first type of death is a spiritual death, which is what Paul is talking about here in Romans. So a spiritual death is separation from God as a result of the fall, which is Adam and Eve, all human beings are born spiritually dead, captives of the domain of darkness. And you can reference that in Genesis 2.17, Colossians 1.13, and here in Romans 6.23. There's a second type of death called a positional death. Positional death is separation from sin and the sin nature. Every believer is made spiritually alive and placed in Christ at salvation. We now have the ability to choose whichever moment whether we will serve our old sin nature, which will not take away until we die physically or our new nature. So that's positional death where you have a choice to choose. And then there is something called a temporal death. Now that positional death, let me give scripture to reference that. Romans 6, 1 through 4, and then also Romans 6, 10 and 11, Galatians 2 and 20, then Colossians 2, 12, Colossians 2, 20, wow. and then Colossians 3 and 3. Now I'm kind of going kind of fast because we got to go through the message, but you can go back and listen to this and study this. This is very, very powerful. The third type of death is a temporal death. 
Temporal death is carnality, separation from fellowship with God. Every time we as Christians give into temptation to sin, we enter temporal death. Um, you can reference that in James 1.15, Romans 8.2, Romans 8.6, Romans 8.13, and then 1 Timothy 5 and 6. And then the fourth death is a what's called an operational death. It is separation from our profession of faith from the practice of that faith. Hallelujah. Uh, that can be referenced in James 2.26, Ephesians 5.14, and then 1 John 1, 5 through 6. Now, this, this one may kind of take some of you for a loop. There's also something called a sexual death. Sexual death is the inability to function sexually. That can be found in Romans 4, 19 through 20. You can also find that reference in Hebrews 11, 11 and 12. The sixth death is a physical death, and we're all familiar with that. A physical death is a separation of the soul and body, the inability to function in the physical realm on earth. That can be found in Hebrews 9 and 27. And also Genesis 5 and 5. And then the last death is what the Bible talks about. It's called the second death, which is the judgment of unbelievers, eternal separation from God. And you can read that in Revelations chapters 19 and 20. So, beloved, I pray that that was a blessing to you. So always understand and realize that when the Bible says death, we need to understand what type of death that the word of God is speaking of in that. So here, death, for it says the wages of sin is death, is talking about a spiritual death or a separation from God. So, beloved, in this scripture, though we have to understand that though God loves us, his holiness is is such that he cannot live with evil. For the prophet Habakkuk described God this way. He says in Habakkuk 1.13, he says, Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. God does not ignore our sin. On the contrary, Romans 32 and 23 says, you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Even those secret sins we hide in the recesses of our hearts will one day be brought to light. For Hebrews 4.13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. See, beloved, this type of preaching is not popular. You know, this type of preaching, we, we don't want to hear about sin. We want to just hear God is good. He loves me, and he's going to get me through, and he's going to give me the desires of my heart. But, beloved, let me tell you, we serve a just God. We serve a God that's going to give you everything he talks about in this word. Then we also, hallelujah, serve a God that cannot stand to look at sin. Beloved, so we need to get to a point in our lives where we understand and know that we are getting paid, yes, in this world with the things we do, but beloved, in that same context, we are also getting paid by the wages of sin that is in our life. 
So, beloved, as we travel through, we need to, to look at what the state of this present world is. What, what, where is this present world? And, and, beloved, one of the things that we have to understand is that even though we are in the world, the Bible says that we are not of this world. Right. Meaning that as we walk and we see things and that other people are doing and see the things that this world offers, we have a new, we, the Bible says that we are new creatures. Yeah. We have a new mind. We have a new walk and a new talk. Mm -hmm. So we have to deny the things in this world. Deny the things of this flesh, even though you want, because you're in this flesh uniform, you have to understand that the wages of sin is death. And I don't care, like my wife was, we were talking the other day, she was telling me about how these people go and, and feed the sick, feed the hungry visit the sick, and do all these wonderful things for people. But, beloved, do you know that you can do all yeah. the great things yeah. in this world and go fly across the country feeding the sick and doing all the great things, but if you have not given your heart to Jesus, it is in vain. So, beloved, we need to, to, this is a wake-up call this morning. This is a wake-up call to understand that, yeah, we're getting paid in this world, but we also need to watch about getting paid through the wages of sin and that that wage is death. So let's take a look at the state of this present world. We go to Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. It says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in their futility of their thinking. Mm -hmm. They are darkened in their understanding." And separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. And beloved, let me tell you, I know that to be true because that was me when I was in this world. I wasn't thinking about what God was saying. And, and I was brought up in the church, went to church every Sunday. All I was concerned with was what my flesh wanted and going partying and and, and seeing women and doing what I want, when I wanted and how I wanted to do it. Sipping on that wine and drinking and doing all the things that I was big and bad enough to do and did not realize I was on my way to a burning hell. It, it, it's just like we talked about last week. When Noah was building the ark, and he was trying to tell for 100 years, trying to get the people to see that what you're doing is wrong. You need to get on the boat with us because God is fed up with your living, and he's going to wash everything away. But the people kept doing what they wanted. Why? Because it was what the masses was doing. It was what their flesh wanted. 
It was what they, they had, their mindset was just, I'm going to do me. It's about me. Getting paid. All these things. All of this. And what happened? God let it rain. They had never seen rain before. And washed them all away. And beloved, one of the things we know about history is what? It repeats itself. And what you need to know and understand that the same God that got fed up in that day is the same God that is getting fed up today with the living that we are doing in this world today. And everybody, all we want is to get paid. Everybody wants to get paid. So, beloved, one of the consequences of sin, therefore, is more sin. There is an insatainable lust for more. To attend by a dulling of the conscience and a blindness to the spiritual truth. You ever seen that person that no matter how much they get, they always want more? No matter how many women you sleep with, you always want to sleep with that other one. You always see something different you want to do. No matter how much you drink. I remember when I was drinking back in the day, and I would get drunk and wake up the next morning with the worst hangover. And I would be like, Lord, I am never going to do this again. Oh, my God, I was sick, throwing up, and was like, God, I'm going to never do this again. But what happened? Next Saturday came, boys getting together. Where am I? Out there again. Why? Because the flesh is never satisfied. I don't care how much money you get, it ain't never going to be enough. I don't care how many cars you have, it's never enough. I don't care how much sex you have, it is never enough. No matter what your body craves, it is never enough. So, beloved, that's why in 1 Corinthians 2.14 it says, The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. That's why somebody that's not saved, somebody that don't know Jesus, they don't understand these spiritual truths that we talk about. They, don't, they, they choose to lean more on the philosophical things of the world. The things that can be that are taught and, and science can prove. But everything that is taught in this world can be combated through the word of God. And beloved, one of the things that we have to recognize in this world is that this world every day is deteriorating. Everything in this world, there's nothing you can point at in this world that will be here through eternity. Nothing. So, beloved, when you think about that and you think about your investment, why would you choose to invest in something mm, that. that will not be here Opposed to investing in something that will be here through eternity. So, beloved, the choice comes. Are you going to get paid through this world that will come to an end? Or are you going to choose to get paid through what the end of the scripture says, but the gift of God. 
is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And I know what you're saying. Oh, preacher, you're a preacher. You're going to preach this stuff. And you you in the Bible. And there's more to this world than the Bible. And all of this and that. Yep, there is. And my charge to you is to find me one person in this world that you can point at that don't know Jesus that you can point at and say they got it. You can point at and say this is what I want what they have and what they're going through. Because beloved, one thing that is the common denominator in life is that we all I don't care who you are, must die. Everybody. And no matter what you have on this earth, no matter what you obtain, my oldest son is, is into uh, flipping houses. He wants to have different streams of income, and that is beautiful. I love the ambition of it. But to have all of that, and not have Jesus. What good, well, the Bible says, what good is it to gain this whole world and lose your soul? If the, who, maybe who was the man, the singer, Frank Sinatra, sang a song, I did it my way. And when he died, they they put in his casket his, his favorite bottle of wine and something else. But let me tell you, he wasn't holding it. <laughs> Ain't nothing you gain in this world you're going to take with you. Solomon said, Solomon had all the houses he wanted. He had all the women he wanted. Everything his heart and his flesh desired he had. He had more money than countries. And the conclusion that he gave to life. Y'all listen to this. The conclusion that he gave. Is that he will die the same death as a fool. He, he'll die the same death. As the, the bum sitting on the corner with not a house to go to. So, beloved, it's, it's, it's time to wake up. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with having the riches of this world. There's nothing wrong with getting paid, but getting paid without Jesus is meaningless. Is nothing. Is what the Bible says. It's chasing wind. Have you ever tried to chase wind? Can you chase wind? Can you catch wind? That's what chasing riches and gaining the things of this world. The Bible describes as like chasing wind. So, beloved, the consequences of suppressing the truth. Is that God gives the sinner over to the sinful desires of their hearts. Shameful lust and a depraved mind. For, for Romans 1, 24 through 28 says, Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity. For the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And worship and served created things rather than the creator. Who is forever praised. Amen. Amen. And because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged 
natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. And then verse 28 says, Furthermore, just as they do not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a deprived mind so that they do not what ought to be done. Beloved, let me tell you. What this means is that God may allow the sinner to serve his own God and reap destruction of his body and soul. Beloved, let me tell you, it is a fearful thing to be given over to your own destructive ways. Good God Almighty. So beloved, know this. That God gives us grace. But beloved, understand that God is just. His grace is sufficient. You know what that means? That means his grace is enough. enough. That means it ain't going to overflow to where you can just do whatever you want, how you want, when you want to do it. And then it ain't so low that you don't get enough of it. His grace is just. His grace is sufficient. And beloved, you may say, well, well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, what do you mean his grace? I know that's what the Bible said, but well, well, wh where are you getting this from? Well, beloved, one of the things, again, that we preach and stand on in this ministry is that God knows the hearts. He Good God am I. Of every man, woman, boy and child. God judges the heart and the mind. And if we go to scripture, 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. For people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord, hallelujah, you, looks at the heart. Revelations 2 and 23 says, I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches the hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. And I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Jeremiah 17 and 10 says, I, the Lord, search the hearts and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. And then the last scripture that I have about how God judges the hearts and the minds, Psalms 44, 21 says, would not God have discovered it since he knows the secrets of the heart? Beloved, there's no way you can fool God. That's why you can come to church, you can shout, you can run around the church, you can preach all the sermons that, that set people. You can preach sermons where others are saved. And your soul is damnation for hell. Wow. Good God wow. Almighty. Why? Because your heart. Woo, Jesus. Beloved, as I come to a close, one thing that we have to know is that his 
grace is sufficient. And that means his grace makes it a level playing field. Good God Almighty. Did y'all hear that? His grace makes it a level playing field. That means no matter how much sin you've done or how less sin you've done, when you give your life to Jesus, all of it is wiped away and you have a level playing field. That, that means that, that as you have given your life to Christ, you, you've confessed with your mouth and, and you believe in your heart. That, that, that don't mean that you're not going to sin no more. Let me say it. Let me, let me say it. That, that, that don't mean that because you give your life to Christ that you won't sin no more. It don't mean that. We, we, we sin every day. Sins that we know, hallelujah, and sins that we don't know. But, but it's his grace, hallelujah, that, 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 that gives us that level playing field. It, it's, it's the blood of Jesus that, that was shed on the cross that, that covers the, the multitude of sin. But beloved, as, as Romans 6 and 1 says, should we sin because grace abounds? My God, my God. God forbid. No, we, we, we just don't sin be, because grace is there. And beloved, that's the point where God has to look at the hearts of a man. Are, are, are you sinning just because you know grace is there? Or are you doing just because you know you're going to get away with it? That's why he says in his word, repent. If you've gone with us as we've studied these churches, no matter what he had against them, he, he always gave them an opportunity to repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Don't, don't get paid and be caught up in the wages of what you get paid for, which is sin and death. Let's think about getting paid from the gift of God. See, you ain't even got to do nothing. All you got to do is accept him. My God. And he gives you the gift of God with the salvation in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says, but he said to me, this is Paul talking. Paul had a thorn in his side. He, he had something he was dealing with that he was fighting against. And Paul had prayed three times. And he still had it. He was still fighting with it and struggling. And God told him that my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power, hallelujah, would rest on me. And then Ephesians 2 and 8 says, for it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. So beloved, realize that as Jesus gives his hook in his song about getting paid, he says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Choose to get paid through the gift of God, gift of God. and not get paid through the wages of sin, which that wage is death. Death being separated. Death being apart from God. Death being caught up in this world and what this world has to offer. 
Beloved, we, we, we serve a God that wants to see you blessed. Yes. For Jeremiah talks about he knows the plans for you. Plans to increase you. He, for an expected end, he, he wants the best for you. Uh-huh. But beloved, you, you can't eat candy and not get cabbages. <laughs> you, you can't just go through life and, 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 and praising God and throwing your hands up for the hand of God. God Almighty. He, he has more for you than, than houses and cars and, and money. For we all will come to a day where we will leave this earth and we all must die. And everyone who dies must answer to our Heavenly Father. So, beloved, my my cry out to you today as we come to a close, baby, you can go ahead, and, is that get paid, but don't let the pain have you. It's all right to have the money, the cars, all the things that this world has all right to have them. But don't let them have you. For remember God's rap song in getting paid is for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May we all stand if there be one if there be one that you are tired of chasing the things of this world and you are ready to chase Jesus, you, you, you're tired and you realize that you, you don't want to get paid by this world anymore. But there is a payment that you can receive that will take you through to the ends of this world. That that will take you beyond life and have life more abundantly. Would you come? You can give me your hand and confess with your mouth. But giving your heart to Jesus is between you and him. Would you come? And if there be one where you've given your life to Christ, you, you're saved, you, you've confessed, you believe, but you've had some, some things in your life that you don't understand. You, 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 you've gone through some stuff and you, you got some questions and you, you, you've slid back and and to some old ways and, and, and you're ready to repent for the sake of Christ would you come would you come and give your life back to him for no matter what you've done he always has his hand out ready to receive you if you are ready to make that decision and repent and give your life to him. And yet there may be another where you say, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, and I want to walk with you. I want to be with you. I want to be a part of the ministry. We want to be a part of the fellowship. Then we ask that you come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We ask, God, that you would touch every man, woman, boy, and child under the sound of my voice that they would receive this word that you have given and that it will change the hearts and the minds of these your people. For God, you have set a standard and you expect us to walk in that standard. 
Thank you, God, for being there for us, for helping us. Thank you, God, for your grace and your new mercies, hallelujah, that we receive every morning. Cover us, Father, today in the blood of Jesus. Keep us, Father, from all hurt, harm, or danger. And, Lord, allow us to have that one moment to make a decision for you and not a decision for ourselves. God, we love you, we thank you, and we honor you. For it is in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name. And we give your name all the glory and honor. For we pray in the name of your son, Jesus, through the power of his Holy Spirit, we say amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Again, we ask that everyone would govern yourself to the announcements. We pray that you all would join us this Thursday for our Bible study where we will end uh, our study on the, uh, the churches in Revelation. I think this uh, last um, service is a uh, teaching is going to be on the church of Ephesus is where we will end our study. So we ask that you would join us. 3331 Blue Ridge Road. Follow the signs to the Master Church Worship Center at 7 o'clock. And then meet us again here at the Master Church Worship Center next Sunday at 830 for another service. God bless you. God bless you. So as we come to a close, we want everyone to come and shake hands. Uh, this morning, we give God praise. We thank him. We give him glory. And Father, we thank you. We ask that you would continue to move and have your way in our lives. Cover us, Father, in the blood of Jesus. Keep us, Father, as we leave this place, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, but we can trust and believe that you are always by our side. Yes. We thank you and we honor you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.